by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal panhata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, political stability begins. The ninth parliament convened today, where the country's new speaker and political representatives were appointed to lead the country for the next five years. Offering hope, President Gotabaya invites the new parliament to join him in building a safe, secure, and sustainable country based on family values and productive citizens. Good signs. The central bank announces further cuts to market interest rates to spur growth. The board has revised downwards the caps on warning, temporary overdrafts, credit card facility, and also on allowed penal rate margin. Lackadaisical approach. Easter Commission told that intelligence review meetings were few and far between, with no defence secretary present after October 2018. All this and much more coming up on this Thursday, the 20th of August 2020. Nava Sunlight Sakura. Then Dikkal Pavatina Sakura Malsuandin. From Ada Derana. This is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I am Shanela Fernando. Moving on to your top stories for tonight. The inaugural sitting of the Ninth Parliament of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka commenced this morning with the participation of 223 parliamentarians minus the United National Party and our Power of People's Party representatives. Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna parliamentarian Mahinda Yapa Abhivardhana was unanimously appointed as the Speaker of the country's Supreme Legislative Body. Leader of the Samagi Janabalavegi, Sajid Premadasa was recognized as the leader of the opposition. In more developments, a vote on account for government expenses for the period from 1st September until the budget for the following year is passed will be presented to the parliament on Thursday, the 27th of August. The party leaders who met today under the chairmanship of Speaker Mahinda Yapa Bevardhana decided to hold sittings of parliament tomorrow and on the 27th and 28th of August respectively. The inaugural sitting of the Ninth Parliament of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka commenced at 9.30 a.m. today. The Secretary General of Parliament then presented the President's statement on the convening of Parliament. As the first and foremost task of the new Parliament's inaugural session, the Speaker was appointed. Parliament is a part of Parliament. The proposal to appoint Mahinda Yapa Bevardhana as the custodian of the Supreme Legislative Body in the country was seconded by the General Secretary of Samagijana Balavegya, MP Ranjit Madhuma Bandara. Accordingly, by virtue of a unanimous vote, Mahinda Yapa Bevardhana was appointed as the country's 11th Speaker of Parliament. The swearing in of the parliamentarians followed after the speaker took his oaths. Garu Mantri Varuni, then Obasielu Denama, Pratikna di Moho, Durundi, Musidikoli with the unknown committee. And from Vivasta, Araksha, Kotanu, the money, and about the members of the house, including Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, extended their wishes to the new speaker of the parliament. Pratibhima Sri Lanka ini naik wana Parlimen tu, abinu katana ya Korea wasin teri pat kiri me, bima pilih bandu, ubu tu mata, atau kalau jangan tu tu mata tu raja ini, agak hari yang musuh berpatum, mian asal awal di pilih kanono. Kalau katana ya tu, ubu tu mata raja, balan, sesuatu yang besar, ada kim samuya, di mana putgali. Bagi mau tu mata kabinet amat itu kosin, diri kekal ya katil tu kerela, ini ada kim sambar ya, semoga me Parlimen tu. 
पार्लिमेंट तो अटे वो तुम भक्ष पाती हाँ स्वादी न काटी तो करना आवश्य शक्ति हाँ दायरे वो तुम आते दिए ना मिस्टर स्पीकर डेमोक्रेटिकली इलेक्टेड पार्लिमेंट इज़ द एपिटमी ऑफ़ अ फंक्शनिंग डेमोक्रेसी इट इज़ इनकम्बेंट अपॉन ऑल ऑफ़ अस टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड प्रमोट अ वाइब्रेंट एंड साउंड डेमोक्रेसी as the custodian of this august assembly you are ethically and morally obliged to uphold the great principles of democracy it is incumbent upon you to be equitable impartial and non prejudicial this institution represents the will of the people the voice of the voiceless and you as the guardian angel of parliament we believe you will ensure that people's sovereignty will be protected and enhanced With your long experience in Parliament, I have not the slightest doubt that you will discharge your functions effectively and efficiently, and in a bipartisan and acceptable way to all members of Parliament. May I clearly state, Mr. Honourable Speaker, I and my party will extend to you our maximum cooperation that you will expect of us in the discharge of your functions, as Honourable Speaker. You are the custodian of the rights of this Parliament and us members of this House. We have, in the past, attempted to introduce many reforms within the House, the way in which this House conducts its affairs, and also to maintain the dignity and decorum of the affairs of this Assembly. In doing so, certain far-reaching reforms have been introduced with the concurrence of both sides of the House, very particularly in the conduct of affairs as the house being the primary watchdog over public finance these progressive measures i hope under your esteemed leadership will be maintained and we really appreciate that uh, we have had the opportunity of a seasoned politician to be heading this institution we have a very powerful government now a similar government was constituted under the late j r jawadhan in 1977 it was during that regime that we had the 1983 program certainly this government too could follow the path of the elephant of that time and end up as today reduced to a single member in the future but i am sure they would not they would prefer to learn from our mistakes of the past and usher in a period of peace and prosperity where all communities would feel equal to each other and walk with dignity and pride as children of mother lanka that freedom and equality could dawn only if we shed the false historical perspectives of the past and recognize the intrinsic rights of the people living in the north and east of sri lanka we are sure you will guide us all without fear or favor i have the honor and privilege of being the youngest member in this house what i have seen is that people have given this government the mandate to work and under your guidance and under your leadership i am sure we can bring a change to mother sri lanka we have a house today that is heavily weighted towards one side and under those circumstances for a speaker belonging to that one side to perform his duties on behalf of the entire house is that much more onerous all parties represented in this house come here today with their respective mandates those mandates must be respected those mandates must be debated and due place must be given it is your responsibility to ensure that such fairness takes place for you to perform that duty our party will extend to you the utmost cooperation siyaluma garu mantri varuni nawa wani abhinawa parliamentuwe uttaritara kathanayaka dureta ma thora pat kara ganima pilibandawa mage hrudayangama stutiya pudakara sitimi ආණ්ඩු පාර්ශ්වයේ හා විරුද්ධ පාර්ශ්වයේ විසින් මා කෙරෙහි තබන ලද විශ්වාසය පිළිබඳ මගේ ප්‍රණාමය පුද කරමි මෙම උත්තරීතර තනතුරේ ස්වාධීනත්වයේ මෙන්ම අපක්ෂපාතීත්වයේ අනාදී සුවිශේෂී ලක්ෂණ නිරන්තරයෙන් ආරක්ෂා කරමින් ඔබ සැම මෙලෙස මට බාර දුන් මේ බාර දුර වගකීම මාගේ උපරිම ශක්ති ප්‍රමාණයෙන් අවංකව හා කාර්යක්ෂම ඉටු කිරීමට Thereafter, Ranjit Simbala Pitiya was unanimously appointed as the new deputy speaker of parliament. Sri Lanka Freedom Party MP Angajan Ramanathan, who was elected to Parliament from the Jaffna district, was appointed the Deputy Chairman of Committees of the Parliament. Minister of Foreign Relations Dinesh Gunawardena was appointed as the Leader of the House, while Minister Johnston Fernando was appointed the Chief Government Whip. Leader of the Samagi Janabala Vegi, Sajid Premadasa, was then recognised as the Leader of the Opposition by the Speaker. Thereafter a meeting for all party leaders was called by speaker and the house was adjourned till 3 pm Enjoy a very smooth shave with the Big Easy 2 razor Big Easy 2
After the first session of the ninth parliament recommenced at 3 p.m. today, President Gotabe Rajapaksa presented his policy statement to the country's legislature. During his statement, the head of state invited parliamentarians to accept his hand of friendship and join him to create a sustainable country with safety, equality and freedom for all. With the parliament due to reconvene tomorrow, the president's policy statement is scheduled to be debated upon by members of the parliament tomorrow. The first session of the 9th Parliament commenced today with Parliamentarian Mahinda Yapa Bivardana being the first to arrive in Parliament, followed by Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Nila Sampradaya Namavana Parliament we Garu Katanaik Vrayalesin Garu Mahinda Yapa Abevardana Matituman Bebote Sri Lanka Prajata Antrika Samajavadi Janraji Garu Agramat Mahinda Rajapaksa Matuman Ge Samprapti Siduna. We saw the arrival of Honourable uh, Prime Minister of the uh, Ninth Parliament. This was followed by President Gotabe Rajapaksa's arrival along with the First Lady. Newly elected Speaker of the Parliament, Mahinda Yapabe Vardhana and the General Secretary of the Parliament, Dammigat Disanayaka, welcome the President and the First Lady. Sri Lanka Prajata Andrika Samajavadi Janraji Parliament to Sankirne Veta. President Gotabe Rajapaksa then presented his policy statement. Itihase Pratama Matavata Samanupatika Kramayatati Pavatonalada Mativarane King Tunindeka Itihasika Janavarama Sri Lanka Hodujana Peramunaha Ehi Mitra Kandayam Murata Labadu Desha Premi Janata Avata, Mama Mulinma Stuti Karana. Pasugiya Vasare, November Maase, Pavati Janadi Pativarane, Hatanama Lakshaka Tadika Janatava, Sui Seshi Janavaramak Labaduni, Magana Tibu Mahat Viswashe. A Viswashe Kada Nokarana Bavata Madun Porondua, Metek Ma Kriave no Pukarati Beno. Me Masa Nameka Kala Parasia Tula. Vivida Badaka Hamui, Apavisin Rata Palane Kala Akare Gana, Rate Janatava Pahadi Min Sitinabawa, Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Labu, Ati Vishala, Janavaramin, Opuna, Buddha Gamata Pramukatpe Tahuru Karanatarama, Merate Onam of Puravasi Kuta, Taman Kamati Agamak Adhime Nidahasa, Vadat Hunim Surakshita Viatibawa, Janatava Tamevinamita Pahadili. Didas Dahaname Vasare Sidu Pasquirida Trust Prahare Nisa Janata Vatar Rati Arakshava Piliband Viswashe Dadilesa Binavati Tibuna Aperaje Mulika Pratipatiavana Rati Arakshava Tahuru Karami Arakshakasa Buddhiansa Prati Vuhagata Kota Janata Vatula Ativi Tibena Bia Natikota Rati Arakshava Yali Surakshita Karana Tapi Kati to Kotatibena. The President then went on to say that the law will act against anyone who contributes to the waste and corruption in the country. Ma Porundu Akaretama Samani Janaji Viteta Bada Vakwa Tibuna Patala Kriakarakam Madra Via Vadura Vani Samaja Vivasane Angen Janatava Galava Ganima Sandaha Vidimat Vadapilila Tibimat Janata Viswase Hilamata Hetu Vitibeno Janasava Mesa Vishala Janavara Mak Rajeta Labadunne Kumana Pekshavan Peradari Karagana the Yanagana Apatava Bodia Tibeno Monama Hetuak Nisava E Apekshavan Bidavar Nakari Tapu Katu to Karani Nehe Vasara Ganava Pura Tamanjiva to Idam Mulata Nisi Aitiak Nati Janatava Sitino own tapi nisi krama vedekata oppu laba denawa vishala videsha vinimayak vayakota aushada anayane karanawa venuwata boho aushada varga merata deema nishpadane kirima api aarambha kara tibena aushada anayane di siduwana atimaha dushana kriya turan kirimata api katayutu karanawa aushada nishpadane sapai maha niyamane sandaha venama rajya matyanshak atikale e sandahai Punar Jeevan Udakar Ganimata Nam 
අපි අලුතෙන් සිතන්නට පුරුදු විය යුතුයි out of the box thinking is required in order to meet the economic challenges කටුපොල් වගාව අපි සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම නතර කරනවා සංවර්ධන වැඩසටහන් ක්‍රියාත්මක කිරීම සඳහා අවශ්‍ය ප්‍රතිපාදනම තම අමාත්‍යාංශයට ඍජුවම ලබා දීමට කටයුතු කර තිබීම නිසා මූල්‍ය වගකීම තමන් සතුව තිබෙන නිසා රාජ්‍ය ඇමතිවරුන්ට බාධාවකින් තොරව තම වගකීම ඉටු කළ හැකි ඉදිරියේදී නාස්තියට දූෂණයට සම්බන්ධ වන පොදුගලින්ට තරාතිරම නොබලා නීතිය ක්‍රියාත්මක කිරීමට මම පසුබට වන්නේ නැහැ යම් කිසි අමාත්‍යාංශක ඉලක්කයන් සපුරා ගැනීමට පසුබෑමකට ලක් වන්නේ නම් රජයේ ප්‍රතිපත්ති ක්‍රියාත්මක කිරීම සඳහා අවශ්‍ය වෙනස්කම් කිරීමට මා කිසිවිටකත් පැකිලෙන්නේ නැහැ The president added that the government will make it their primary priority to abolish the 19th amendment and bring about a new constitution apage palamu karyak lesa api janatawata porondu paridima 19 weni vihastha sansodhane ivat kirimata katayutu karanawa in pasu sielu dena samage ekwa ratata awashya saha galapena nava vihasthawa genenawa mehindi me rate sieluma janatawa sambandhen එක රටක් එක නීතියක් යන සංකල්පයට මූලිකත්වය දෙනවා පැහැදිලි තීන්දු තීරණ ගත නොහැකි අන්තවාදී බලපෑමට නිරන්තරයෙන් යටපත් වන අස්ථාවර පාර්ලිමේන්තුවක් රටකට සුදුසු නැහැ නව ව්‍යවස්ථාවක් හඳුන්වා දීමේදී වර්තමාන මැතිවරණ ක්‍රමයේ වෙනස්කම් සිදු කිරීමට අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා සමානුපාතික ඡන්ද ක්‍රමය තුළ ඇති සාධනීය ලක්ෂණ රැකගන්න අතරම පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ ස්ථාවර භාවයද During his closing remarks, President Gautabi Rajapaksa invited the members of the parliament to support him in building a sustainable future. Mama mage rata ta adare karano. Mama mage rata gena adam bare veno. Mata mage rata gena dakmak tibeno. Ape aramuna vanne paladai puravasye satutin jeevatvana paula gunagarka samajya ආ සෞභාග්‍යමත් දේශයක් ගොඩනැගීමයි ජනතාවට අප පුරුන්දු සෞභාග්‍යමත් දේශ ගොඩනැගීම සඳහා මා සමග එකතු වෙන ලෙස ඔබ සියලු දෙනාටම මා මිත්‍රත්වයේ දෑ දිගුකට ආරාධනය කරනවා More news on the other side of this break stay tuned Salem Bank the bank with a heart Welcome back in more news the presidential commission of inquiry into the east so attacks was told yesterday that the weekly intelligence review meeting on national security had not been held properly since October 2018 further during the 14th day of testimony by former SIS director senior DIG Nilantha Jayawardena it was also revealed that the army intelligence board had not been informed on the foreign intelligence warning for 2 weeks after receiving it on the 4th of April 2019 The Presidential Commission of Inquiry investigating the Easter Sunday attacks heard the testimony of former State Intelligence Service Director Senior DIG Nilantha Jayawardena for the 14th day yesterday Senior DIG Jayawardena told the commission that no formal intelligence review meetings were held after October 2018 with only one meeting held per month in November and December that year He added that although no intelligence review meeting was held in January 2019 there were two intelligence review meetings held in February and one in March but Defense Secretary Hema Siri Fernando did not deign to attend either of these meetings The witness was then questioned by the additional solicitor general at the commission whether the army's intelligence board and the criminal investigation department were informed about the foreign intelligence warning received on 4th April 2019 In response the witness revealed that when the intelligence warning was received on 4th April it was forwarded to the IGP on 9th April and a copy also sent to the CID but the director of the army intelligence board was not informed of the relevant information he further stated that following the 16th April Katangkuri motorcycle explosion dry run carried out by the east attackers he called IGP Pujit Jayasundara at 8:59 a.m. on 18th April to inform him and stated sir we have to investigate this immediately Zaharan is behind this the Katangkuri police is not investigating this properly we must hand this over to the CID the witness added that in response IGP Pujit Jayasundara told him yes Nilantha you inform the CID and i will tell them as well 
The commission was told that following this exchange, he then proceeded to inform Criminal Investigation Department Senior DIG Ravi Senaviratna, Terrorist Investigation Division Director Varuna Jai Sundara and the Director of the Army Intelligence Board on the very same day. The Attorney General's Coordinating Officer, State Council Nishara Jayaratna, says that the arrest of former Superintendent of the Nigambu Prison, Anuruddha Sampayo, by the Nigambu Police Headquarters Inspector was an act played out to mislead the public. In the meantime, the AG has issued written instruction to the acting IGP to conduct an investigation on both the Nigambu Headquarters Inspector and the irresponsible nature of the police media spokesperson during the arrest of the former Nigambu Prison Superintendent. The Attorney General has instructed the acting IGP today to conduct an investigation into the conduct of the Nigambo headquarters inspector in arresting the former superintendent of the Nigambo prison, Anuruddha Sampayo, who is currently in remand along with three jailers of the Nigambo prison. Anuruddha Sampayo and I am police barrier Gat Stani, CCTV Darshana Anua, Migamu Molastana Police Parikshakavaria Atulu Nirdarin Pidisa, Police Jeep Pratekind, Eat Pitupasa Van Rathaking Feminicity, Anurud the Sampai and Amatagi, Sahodere Atulu Pidisa, Anurud the Sampayo, Emastani at Langavenatek, Randi Balasitna Karia, Nirikshan Yuna, Esam Anurud the Sampayo Namata, Ratupehati Discovery Sports Varge, Jeep Pratekin, Emastani at Pamina, Rathain Besser, Migamu Molastana Police Parikshakavaria. ක්ෂකවරයාගේ රටේ ඇසලට ඇවිදන ආකාරයත් එහි සටහන් වී තිබුණා එම අවස්ථාවේදී අනුරුද්ධ සම්පායෝ තම ජංගම දුරකථනේ යමකු අමතමින් සිටි ආකාරයත් ඉන් අනතුරුව එම දුරකථන ඇමතුම මූලස්ථාන පොලිස් පරීක්ෂකවරයාට කතා කිරීමට ලබා දෙන ආකාරයත් පෙනී ගියා තවද මීගමුව මූලස්ථාන පොලිස් පරීක්ෂකවරයා අනුරුද්ධ සම්පාය නැමැත්තාගේ ශරීරයට අතපාමින් ඔහු සුහදව පිළිගන්න ආකාරයත් හොඳින් නිරීක්ෂණය කිරීමට හැකියාවක් ලැබුණා ඒ අනුව ඒ අත්අඩංගුවට ගැනීම නොව වරෙන්තු කරුවකු පූර්ණ සැලසුමක් සහිතව සාදරයෙන් පිළිගැනීමක් බව සාමාන්‍ය දැනුමක් ඇති ඕනෑම පුද්ගලයෙකුට පැහැදිලි වන කරුණක් බවට ගරු නීතිපතිවරයා විසින් වැඩ බලන පොලිස්පතිවරයාට දැනුම් දීමක් සිදු කළා. එසේම මූලස්ථාන පොලිස් පරීක්ෂකවරයා අනුරුද්ධ සම්පායන සැකකරුව පොලිස් ජීප් රථයේ පිටුපස අසුනේ රඳවා ගනිමින් යම් පුද්ගලයෙකු එතනට පැමිණෙන තෙක් ප්‍රේක්ෂාවෙන් බලා සිටි තත්ත්වයක් නිරීක්ෂණය කළා. එසේම ඔවුන් එසේ යම් කාලයක් එම ස්ථානයේම රැඳී ඇත්තේ එක් මාධ්‍ය ආයතනයක මාධ්‍ය කරුවකුගේ පැමිණීම අපේක්ෂාවෙන් බවට CCTV දර්ශන නැරඹීමේදී මනාව පැහැදිලි වන බව ගරු නීතිපතිවරයා විසින් වැඩ බලන පොලිස්පතිවරයාට දැනුම් දීමක් සිදු කළා. එම මාධ්‍ය වේදියාගේ ජංගම දුරකථනයෙන් අනුරුද්ධ සම්පායන සැකකරු හට මාධ්‍යට කරුණු ප්‍රකාශ කිරීමට අවස්ථාව මීගමුව මූලස්ථාන පොලිස් පරීක්ෂකවරයා විසින්ම ලබා දී ඇති බව වැඩි දුරටත් පැහැදිලි වුණා. එබැවින් ගරු අධිකරණයකින් වරෙන්තු නිකුත් වී තිබූ අනුරුද්ධ සම්පායන සැකකරු වරෙන්තු නිකුත් වී දින 11කට පසු පොලිසිය විසින් අත්අඩංගුවට ගත් බවට මහජනතාවට ඒතු ගැන්වීම පිණිස මේ ආකාරයෙන් මීගමුව මූලස්ථාන පොලිස් පරීක්ෂකවරයා අනුරුද්ධ සම්පායන සැකකරු සමග එකට එක්ව කරන ලද සාමූහික රඟදැක්වීම සම්බන්ධයෙන් කරුණු විමර්ශනය කර නොපමාව වාර්තා කරන ලෙස ගරු නීතිපතිවරයා උපදෙස් ලබා දුන්නා Further the Attorney General has also directed the acting IGP to conduct investigations into the irresponsible behavior displayed by the police media spokesman over the arrest of the former Nigambu prison superintendent In the meantime the police media spokesperson SSP Jalia Sayaratna had this to say when questioned by the media on the incident මීගමුව අධිකරණයේ කවුරුදක්වල තියෙන අපිට අපි දාන්න සේකාව ඔබතුමාට ඒක ප්‍රකාශනය කරා කියලා ඉන්න අධිකරණයට එහෙම නැති සමග ඔබ දැනුවත්. පොලිස් මාධ්‍ය ප්‍රකාශක ප්‍රකාශය ඉදිරිපත් කරන්නේ මාධ්‍ය ප්‍රකාශකට ලැබෙන වාර්තා අනුව දැනට කරු නීතිපත්තුමා විසින් ඒ සම්බන්ධයෙන් වැඩ බලන පොලිස් පත්තුමාට විමර්ශනයක් කිරීම සඳහා කරුණු ලිඛිතව දැනුම් දීලා තියෙනවා. ඒ අනුව මම හිතනවා මට එරෙහිව තියෙන විමර්ශනයක් සම්බන්ධයෙන් මම කරුණු ඉදිරිපත් කිරීම සදාචාරාත්මක නැහැ කියලා. ඒ නිසා මම ඒක සම්බන්ධයෙන් වැඩි දුර කරුණු ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ නැහැ. संभावना 
In a separate development, the largest stock of a drug called Mandy, reportedly worth 200 million rupees, was seized by the police recently, and the trawler which transported the drugs was also seized today. The arrest was made by a team from the Devila Police under the directives of the Mount Lavinia Superintendent of Police. Meanwhile, the Narcotics Control Unit of the Customs Department seized 222 grams of Kush, worth 2.2 million rupees, which had been hidden in parcels and smuggled in from the United States through a courier service. We'll return after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back in your business news. The Central Bank held its monetary review meeting today where Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman announced a reduction of the cap on pawning temporarily overdrafts and credit card interest rates. Professor Lakshman also announced that the country's economic activity, economic activity rather, has recovered faster than most other countries and said that positive external economic conditions observed so far will result in stable external reserves this year. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka's Monetary Policy Review was held this morning, where the bank's governor, Professor W.D. Lakshman, says that according to indicators, the country's economic activity has recovered faster than expected and positive external economic conditions observed will result in stable external reserves this year. Domestic economic activities in Sri Lanka have recovered relatively fast. We have observed greater stability in the external sector indicators. Sovereign bond yields have declined significantly. Exports have rebounded. The trade deficit has improved. Improved. Except in the past few days, the exchange rate has well behaved. The overall positive developments in the external economic conditions, helped by facilitating measures taken by the central bank and the treasury, enable us to envisage the year 2020 ending with external reserves stable after paying up all our debt repayment dues of this year. Professor Lakshman says that with economic contraction indicated by negative first quarter GDP estimates, it is essential to record a strong rebound in the second half of the year in the face of pressure from weak global economic conditions. Finally, the market lending rates are responding to eased monetary con conditions. The negatives include the publication of the first quarter GDP estimate indicating an economic contraction. With a sharper contraction expected in the second quarter, it is essential to have a strong rebound in the second half of the year to make the economy record and overall positive growth in 2020. The weak global economic conditions likely to continue for some time will have a negative impact on domestic economy and its growth. The central bank governor also announced that due to the need to formulate growth in the current low inflation environment, the monetary board has decided to keep policy interest rates unchanged. The monetary policy stance accommodative and reviewed downward interest rates on pawning, temporary overdrafts and credit card rates. Although interest rates have declined in general, we are yet to see a growth in private sector credit. Low revenue collection has also impacted the fiscal sector indicator. Considering these factors together and the need to formulate growth and development in the expected low inflation environment, the Monetary Board decided to maintain the policy interest rates unchanged. The monetary policy stance remains significantly accommodative with a high level of excess liquidity maintained in the Market. The board has also reviewed the market interest rate structure and to begin with revised downwards the caps on pawning, temporary overdrafts, credit card facilities and also on allowed penal rate margin. We hope to soon begin with announcements about the housing credit program for low and middle income groups. Sports Minister Nabal Rajapaksa has appointed a 14-member National Sports Council today, headed by former Sri Lankan cricket captain Mahela Jayavardhana. The council's functions will entail advising the minister on all sport policy and development matters. Former Sri Lanka cricket captain Mahila Jayavardhana has been appointed as the chairman of the National Sports Council, set up to advise the sports minister on policy matters pertaining to sports. Accordingly, there are 14 members in the National Sports Council appointed on the instructions of the Minister of Sports, Namal Rajapaksa. Accordingly, under the chairmanship of former Sri Lanka cricket captain Mahila Jayavardhana, the National Sports Council will consist of former Sri Lankan cricket captain Kumar Sangakkara, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva, Rubina Samarasingha, Sanjeeva Vikramanayaka, Julian Bowling, 
Yashwan Muttetuagama, Supun Viro Singha, Kasturi Chellaraja Wilson, Ruan Kedagala, Rajita Ampe Mohutti, Rohan Fernando, Dilanta Malagamua, and Amal Edri Surya. The functions of the new National Sports Council will be to advise the Sports Minister on the development of sports, policies and standards, as well as the development of infrastructure. We discuss few things right now. Looking at the, the Sports Act is one thing. Parallelly doing that, we wanted to identify what sports that can be given priority for Olympics, for Asian Games, for Commonwealth Games, team sports for world championships, uh, leagues. And at the same time, we need to bring transparency into all sports body. I think integrity is a key word, um, as well as bringing values to all sports bodies and uh, trying to create that environment so that the athletes can actually concentrate on their sports and create that national policy of structure that I discussed earlier from school level to grassroots level development to national level and international level. Well, with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Chanela Fernando. Have a good night.